Chu Sityaks Ah Inchat. Hello, it's Ah Inchat here, Sean Atlio from the Assembly of First Nations. And I want to talk to you today about the recent federal budget. Like most budgets, it was less than what we'd hoped for, but we did make progress on some issues important to our people. Our work, the work of the National Executive, and my work as National Chief sits on the achievements of generations of leaders that have come before us. And each step forward matters. And so we mark the steps while never forgetting the need to keep fighting for real change. We've been at this work a long time, and some things never change. Governments tell us they accept our demands, but they don't have the money to meet them right now. And each time, we try to identify clear goals and demands and push the work forward. And this time, we fought hard for a commitment on education, and we made a good start. We have a lot of work to do. But unlike other years, this time we have a commitment from the government to sustainable funding and to progress. For us, achieving long-term prosperity means implementing the promise of the treaty relationship and the full partnership it represents for all our people. Achieving long-term prosperity means investing in First Nations, the youngest and fastest growing population. We are the future, the key to keeping this country strong. This is our agenda and we will be vigilant in the pursuit of treaty implementation recognition of our rights and investments. The budget identifies investments in First Nations education. And for this, I give full credit to our youth. These investments are a sign that the voices of our young people are perhaps starting to be heard. Our youth across the country are taking action and demanding fairness and equity. They're standing up for their right to a quality education that values them, their cultures, and their languages. I stand with our youth, as do our leaders across the country. We will be relentless in our efforts to ensure our students have secure and sustainable funding for education now and into the future. We must strive to turn the words of commitment into action. The future must not be one of arbitrary and unfair funding, but stable and sustainable funding. The future must deliver change that truly offers hope and opportunity for our youth. We maintain that any cuts to Aboriginal affairs must not be done on the backs of our people. First Nations have been pushing for a long time that changes to the bureaucracy that would be better reflect the nation-to-nation -nation relationship and to ensure First Nations control over First Nations interests. We can reduce the bureaucracy at Aboriginal affairs to make it leaner and more efficient. This would free up resources to improve our communities and at the same time strengthen the ability of First Nations governments to make decisions with their people and plan for their future. Another key area referenced in the budget deals with changes in regulations and legislation that deal with environmental protection. Any change must respect the treaties, the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the principle of free, prior and informed consent. First Nations must be at the center of any decisions that affect our lands, our rights, and our resources, and we will settle for nothing less. To be clear, First Nations want to develop our economies, but not at the expense of future generations. The government is committed to enhancing consultations with First Nations. We're pressing for more details on the nature and timing of any proposed changes, and will insist that the voice of First Nations is central, is heard, and is respected. We're going to be providing more updates and more analysis about the federal budget and how it affects our people in the days to come. And you can go to our website, afn.ca, to get more details about the budget. In fact, this will be key as the government advances implementation plans. We must assess each of these very carefully. The bottom line is that First Nations must continue to drive the change we want to see. I am very inspired by our people who are speaking out and who are taking action to improve their lives and their communities. Our young people are calling for real change in the relationship between Canada and First Nations. We do face challenges, but we also have the solutions. The solutions and the way forward must come from you, from the youth, the women, the elders. You have the answers. We are standing with you and we're reaching out to Canadians to tell them why they should stand with us. And more and more of them are listening. Canadians were shamed by the images they saw of Attawapiskat. I recently visited Kitchisakik, First Nation a community just a few hours north of Ottawa with no basic services, electricity, or running water. This is utterly unacceptable, yet even here, this community knows the way forward. They've come together, and all they need is a willing partner to make real progress. That willing partner has to be Canada, our treaty partner. And just like the treaties, we need to work together. 
Reconciliation requires action. I was reminded recently by Leroy Little Bear that our rights are not just for gatekeeping, but rights are for liberty and they're for action. And we have an opportunity to seize the momentum being generated by the commitments in the budget and at the Crown First Nations gathering in January that drive change forward. We need your energy, we need your ideas, and we need your commitment. None of this will be easy. If it was easy, after all, it would have been done by now. But this is the task before us, and I know we all agree that our future is too important to wait. Reconciliation requires action. The answers are with the people. The solutions are in the community. Governments over the many years have shown that they don't have the answers, but we do. This is our greatest source of hope, that through unity and support for one another, we will ensure hope and opportunity for all of our children and for future generations. Thank you.